So today, we're going to try to put a photo, engrave a photo, to the back of a mirror. This mirror here. Picked it up at Dollar Tree. It's four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And uh, we're going to shine light through from the back. So we're going to adjust it so we can do that. Welcome to the channel. I'm Dave. So recently, I posted a material test on the same mirror so I could determine what speed and power was needed. Now, I broke the mirror but I was able to figure out I needed somewhere around 100 millimeters per second and 20% power to clear off the material on the back of the mirror as, as much as possible. So I will post a link to that video down in the description. After I'd done that, I went ahead and done a, um, a vector and it cleaned it out pretty good. So I'll post that video as well. Now, something else you need to do before you, uh, before you try to do mirrors or, or do photos is a dithering test. And that's right here on the bottom. So you can, I'll, uh, I've got a video for this. I'll post a link to it. Uh, but it's in the interval test on light burn. And uh, you can do that. And you can see how the gradients will look. Uh, and the way I understand it, most diode lasers, 0.1 is pretty standard setting for for both uh, but you can see how it looks and see if you need to make any adjustments so I tried to do this yesterday but I used a photo that was too light I was using a puppy and his ears were so light they didn't it just didn't show up good enough it looked okay but we're gonna do this again so I went to chat GPT and I got a chupacabra and he's pretty dark so we're going to lighten him up uh, do some adjusting and make the features distinguishable from each other uh, so first we're going to resize this guy now the mirror is four and a half by four and a half and that is 114.3 millimeters so you can pick either width or height, either one, and leave the lock on up top. And then you can, you can adjust the photo, and then you'll be able, we'll be able to crop it out. So I'm just going to go to the width, make it 114.3. Then we're going to, we're going to cut this out of, uh, we're going to cut a template out of some cardboard. But first, we're going to do a border so we can crop this photo. But it'll be the same process. So grab a square, hold shift, just drag it out perfectly. Then leave your lock on up top. And then do 114.3. Now, you want to just pull in. And you can see the sides of your photo. You want to just grab the photo, hold your Alt key, and get that lined up. Then you can move the photo to, uh, to get as much of it in that frame, the portion in that frame that you want. And the rest of it's still there. You can click and see that it's all still there, but we're going to... Uh, we're going to crop that out. So now you can grab everything together, right click, and apply mask to image. And then it goes away. Now the photo is still there, but we're going to select everything again. We're going to right click, and then we're going to flatten image mask. Now you've only got the portion that you want on the mirror so we're going to do some adjusting and then we're going to set up a border so we can cut our template out so select your photo right click and adjust image so the one on the left is the original the one on the right 
is what we're adjusting. It seems that the, the key to the adjusting is to make sure you can distinguish the features from each other. Uh, and there's a few, a few instances where you would do a negative image. That's right here. And that would be if you're putting shining light through from the back, which we're doing, or if your photo is lighter than the material that you're putting it on. So let's say we were putting this on uh, some black slate. <clears throat> then we wouldn't we would not do a negative image. We would leave it as is and just adjust some contrast and a few other things. But because we're going to backlight, we're going to have to do a negative image like that. But we're going to do some adjusting over here first. Now it seems that most people prefer either stucky mode over here on the left. Hopefully I'm not covering that up with my face. Stucky mode or Jarvis. Uh, they don't seem to uh, change that much to me, but it's probably just because I don't know what I'm talking about on this particular subject. So I'm going to go with dither. And then we're going to adjust this contrast a little bit. Again, we want to try to make out the features, distinguish the features from each other. And then we will adjust some more after we go negative. And you can see the face starting to come into view pretty good. Let's see what we need to do here. And we may have to go back the opposite direction once we do negative. But we will see. No, nope, that one ain't it. You'll have to play around with these and see what works best for the photo that you're using and your best chance is to start with a really high quality photo so we've got this uh, enhance buttons over here and that just brings out the features sometimes sometimes it does nothing and you can see there how we're starting to distinguish the face from the rest of the body where you can't see it here you can see it here so let's uh let's leave it there now for this uh negative i'm gonna i'm gonna close this i'm gonna save it over here in the layer if you double click that layer you also have negative image here so do it one place not the other and they'll both be uh negative now it won't show here you'll just see the standard photo but now you'll see it here and then if you need to adjust any more you just again you just want to bring the features out and you can see these ears up here how light they are you want to be able to distinguish that and see the outline or when we finish there won't be any ears And that is looking pretty good. And this interval, this line interval, it's almost 0.1, but you could see from the test I've done, it needs to be 0.1. So I'm going to change it to 0.1. The DPI, uh, I'm going to leave alone. I've changed it some, but you really can't tell a difference now. Uh, to really hone in on these uh, settings, you can pick out a feature, like maybe the teeth. And then you can make some adjustments and see if you can bring those out anymore. So we can flip through some of these modes and see if that has an effect. And... It really doesn't. So we're going to stick with dither. We could change a few more buttons, but I'm probably just killing time. This is the only the second time I've done this uh, with a photo. And like I said, the first time was really, really sad. So 
Uh, okay, I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> now, like I said, we're going to cut out a template from some uh, cardboard because it's cheap. I don't do this a lot. So uh, if, you're, if you're doing something repetitive, it's, it's probably good to do a permanent template, but I usually don't. Uh, not for this. Coasters I do, but not not mirrors. So, we're going to grab a square and just uh, hold shift, drag it out perfectly. Now the template, I want it to be a little bit larger, so I'm going to leave the lock on. I'm going to go 114.5 rather than 0.3. Then we're going to touch it, hold the Alt key, and line this up. And then just click the photo and make sure. Uh, and if you, if you come back and you decide you want to do some more adjusting, if you grab everything together and right click, you won't get the adjustment options. You have to just click on the photo itself, right click, and then you'll get adjust image options. Uh, so don't group it together once you get your template set up. So all I'm gonna do is select this, use the comma key to uh, rotate counterclockwise, and the only thing we have to remember is to cut this template out. We're going to change it to a line. Uh, and then we'll turn off the image. Cut this template out. And then we will turn the image back on, turn the cut line off. And we'll jump in the laser, run this, and see what we got. Let's check and see how long it's going to take. Well, that don't work. Let me turn the image back on and turn the line off. Yeah, it looks like 16 minutes. I don't know. Seems pretty quick, but we'll see. All right, so line off, image, image off, line on. Let's jump in the laser and we'll cut this out and see what we got okay folks i'll be right back okay so we've got our piece of cardboard for the template it's raised up off of the honeycomb bed and then we'll set these spacers under the mirror and it'll prevent putting uh residue on the opposite side okay so we've got the line turned on and the image turned off we'll run this and then we'll get our mirror set Okay, when you take out this uh, cutout, be careful not to let anything move around on your, your template. Kind of like I'm doing now. And then try to set your spacers so you're sure that it won't uh, interfere with the image. It'll still do it, but... Just get as little of the mirror as needed to uh, hold it in place. It's a little loud in the background. I've got my secondary fan running. Because this puts off a nasty, nasty smell. You don't want to be sniffing it. I'm pretty sure it's bad for you. Okay, I think we're in there okay. So we're going to turn off the line. Actually, we're going to turn it into a tool so I don't forget later on if I run it again. And then we'll turn the image on, run this. I'm using air and exhaust. And be sure to get away from this and don't be uh, sniffing it up. All right, folks, let's do it.
Okay, well, uh, let me clean this up, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get a closer look at it. Y'all keep your fingers crossed, because this is the last square mirror I have. If it don't work, we have to go to a round one. Well, okay, here's our finished photo, and uh, I don't think we've done too bad. Hopefully, it shows up good. So, we didn't spend a lot of time making adjustments. We just made sure the features stood out from each other. And then we checked that once we went to the negative photo. Now we had to do a negative photo because of the backlighting. And you would also have to do that anytime your photo is lighter than the material you're putting it on. So be sure to start with a high resolution photo. You can easily get those out of ChatGPT even with the free version. I'll drop links to the videos I mentioned the material test, the dithering test, and the vector that I put on a mirror. You can check those out if you like. I think it'll be helpful to do those before you get to this. And if you got questions, let me know. I'm glad to answer them anytime. And if I don't know the answer, I'll at least send you in the right direction. So if this was helpful, please like and subscribe, share and comment. It's all appreciated. It helps the channel grow, helps keep me in the shop learning new things, and I'll keep sharing. So check back often for new videos. You folks take care, and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you.